Tozer, and just in time. It's getting warm. <laughs> I like to, I laugh because, you know, somebody probably thinks that, you know, when I put these books over here that I'm uh, doing it for the camera. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I'm doing it for me. I need to remind myself, you know, and keep track of, let's see, I already got those done, so um, what one do I need to read next? And you know, what hasn't been recorded so that way, you know, I can have a witness that, you know, hey, yes, I did read it, you know, and, <laughs> and that I keep mindful of this agreement that I made with uh, you, whoever's watching, that I need you to keep me on track so I'll be reading this. Otherwise, just like my mind is kind of like spacey, I'd forget which ones I read and still do sometimes, even in the middle of recording them, which is fun. So, even with coffee, even with the Lord, even with the beautiful sunshine, with sitting here and <sighs> having nice times with you, I forget. Because there's so much distraction and attraction that goes on around us that it's easy for any one of us to forget what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. And that's why it's crucial to have a discipline as a disciple to take the time and do those things you know you ought to do, that God has inspired you to do, that God speaks to you. And I put out my water and my coffee, so I'll remember to drink water. <laughs> My wife writes little notes. Did you know that the Bible is a little note to you? <laughs> it's a big note. <laughs> Take note of that. The true Christian is still an enigma to the world. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Ephesians 4.15 Today, as in all centuries, True Christians are an, an enigma to the world, a thorn in the flesh of Adam, a puzzle to angels, a delight of God, and a habitation of the Holy Spirit. Our fellowship ought to take in all of the true children of God, regardless of who and where and what, if they are washed in the blood and born of the Spirit, walking with God, begotten unto life, living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and rejoicing in the salvation to be revealed. We should be with and in fellowship of all of them. The true Christians fear God with a trembling reverence, and yet he is not afraid of God at all. He draws near to him with full assurance of faith and victory, and yet at the same time is trembling with holy awe and fear. The world will never understand that the Christian, though born on earth, still knows by faith that he is a citizen of heaven. Some of our critics say, you Christians talk about yourselves and your relationship to God as if you were God's very best. I have a good answer to that. The very Christian who believes that he is the apple of God's eye is the same unselfish Christian who is giving sacrificially of his money, sending his sons and daughters, or going himself to preach the gospel to the least and the last of the peoples of the earth. For Tozer, the true Christian was one of those that basically did what Jesus said. They denied themselves, they took up their cross, and they followed him. I don't like the word true because nowadays those that might be untrue say they are true. And those that are true don't say true or untrue. And the truth is, is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said bluntly in Matthew that those that are his would do those sayings of his. And those sayings were everything that was on the Sermon on the Mount. I can't... In a day of modern prosperity and times where people seek to do their own thing and they listen to their own words and they maintain their own relationships and they have no accountability, the only thing that I can tell you that's quote-unquote true is the Word of God. Is that when Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount at the end of it, that these sayings of this is the, this is my servants that hears these sayings of mine and does them and when you read it you can't hide from the fact that he says that and I will liken unto the person who built their house upon a rock and the storms of life 
the storms came and the winds blew and that rock and that house stood. And he said, that's the person who does those sayings of his. And those sayings are recorded right before it. The love your enemies. To be blessed because you're poor in spirit. You know them all. You've read them. You've heard them. They are always adapted by people to say that they're quote unquote ideas not to be able to do because if it says your eye offend you pluck it out and yet Jesus says these sayings of mine if you do them you know I can't compromise for you you know if really you really thought that that was that serious there were people in the Catholic Church and in the church history that at one time plucked out their eyes because they felt like they had sinned so much now I would not go so far as to do that for myself but you know I understand that that's what if that constantly is a sin in my life I would remove it because that's what Jesus said it's not pretty it's not nice but that's how serious God treats it so when he said those people that didn't do his sayings he said they were likened unto those that built their house upon sand when the storms came and the rains fell their house was washed away and the ruin was great and I see ministries that are built upon sand and I see people's lives that are built upon sand and I ask them did you read what Jesus said and they say oh yeah I said okay cool I'm glad that's the first step now did you do what Jesus said yeah I did okay cool I'm glad I can say nothing more if you've read what Jesus said and you did what he said then what else can I say to you except that it's Jesus, your Lord, who makes a determination about whether or not you are his or you are not. And it's a serious subject because one day Jesus will say if you're his or you're not. And so for some, I pray they reread what God said and they develop a personal relationship because if you don't have God telling you and challenging you in your personal life to deny yourself, to take up your cross and to follow him if you don't know that there are sayings in there that are pretty serious about your attitude and about your actions and about the way that you arrange your life if you don't know what the Sermon on the Mount is that we call the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus talked about who his disciples were and who his followers were and what these sayings of his were that needed to be obeyed then I think you may find yourself one day talking to Jesus about it and not finding that he knows you and if you do it outside of this life, then he will cast you away. It's too serious to just simply say, oh, be blessed, have an assurance, rest, be confident, go forward, enjoy, party hardy, be a Christian partier, not a worldly partier, because soon you can't tell the difference between the Christians and the non-Christians, because they both party. One of the flesh and one parties in the spirit, but they both deny the Lordship of Jesus Christ you need to find that perfect balance where you know the Word of God not just as it's written but as it's the Son of God as he is real because the days are evil and there's false teaching false doctrine false <laughs> decorations to make us look younger <laughs> false you name it and in a time of false, we need to know what's true. And what I find true is simply read the Bible, read the Word of God, do what it says, trust that it says what it means, and God will show you the way. Because if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, you lean not into your own understanding, in all your ways you acknowledge Him, He'll direct your path. He will. He promised. He said it. He did it. He will. You can't go wrong when you ask God to lead you. You can hide yourself from him. You can hide yourself and disguise it. You can fill yourself with songs of deliverance and do all these religious things that right now in fundamental Christianity is a very popular thing to do to keep yourself very occupied with all the superficial things that make you feel good, do good, look good. But if it isn't God speaking directly to you, it isn't good. It's just hiding the fact 
that he's still dealing with you one-on-one. -on -one. And there's some still things that need to be committed to the Son. So know Jesus today. Walk with Jesus today. Make sure you're hearing from God today. And don't stop until you hear from him. Then go on your way. But do what he says. Know him. Or else he'll say, he doesn't know you. And I would wish that on no one. It is my fervent prayer that all would know God. For once you know him, you'll love him. And once you love him, you'll follow him. And once you follow him, you'll obey him. And it'll be simple and you'll go every day with him. So today, if you want to be loved, find Jesus today.